Hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, new webinar for Ukraine that uh, is very, very, very important for all of us from BSSH and FESH. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you another time. And uh, I'm sorry, but Jonathan Hobby cannot be with us this night. I chair with Andrew the session that is about FLAPS. We wait some minutes that all the colleagues enter in the room. And then we will present Ignacio Roger Deona, that is our guest this night. So thank you, Ignacio, to be here. We ask to you to talk about flaps and coverage of the upper limb. I know you are very expert on that. And uh, Ignacio is a microsurgeon, I think he's orthopedic surgeon, and he's working in Madrid in Fremap Hospital. And uh, he studied with uh, Cavadas, but also in America, in Louisville, in Kleinert Institute. And uh, he's specialized in microsurgery and reconstruction of limbs. He's a hand surgeon. Thank you to be here. Uh, Andrew, pleasure. do you want to say something in Ukrainian? Yes, of course. Добрий вечір, шановні колеги. Раді вітати вас на черговому нашому вебінарі «Рука в руці з Україною», який ми проводимо суспільно з Федерацією Європейських асоціацій хірургів кісті ФЕШ та Британською з ким товариством хірургії кісті BSSH. Сьогоднішня тема нашої, нашого вебінару – це заміщення дефектів тканин кісті та верхньої кінцівки. І сьогоднішній наш лектор Ігнацій Роджер де Она, який живе та працює в Мадриді, в Іспанії. Також він є консультантом в інституті Клейнарта в Сполучених Штатах Америки. Він Ігнацео мікрохірург, він ортопед-травматолог за навчанням і зі спеціалізацією мікрохірургії в хірургії кісті. І сьогодні він нам продемонструє, які основні, найбільш, скажімо так, поширені клапки вони використовують в, наші, в своїй повсякденній практиці для закриття різноманітних дефектів тканин на кісті та верхній кінцівці. So, thank you very much. Thank you, Inácio, once one more time for uh, your willingness to help and to teach us. And uh, I think the stage is yours. Okay. So, thanks a lot. Thanks for, for having me. Really my, my pleasure to help. So, I'm going to just go ahead and share my, my screen. There you go. So I'm going to talk about the, the coverage of the skin defects on the upper limb. So as you all know, it's a, it's a pretty vast uh, theme. There is many, many flaps that you can do. So what I've tried to do is just, uh, just show you what are our workhorses, the flaps that really work for us over the years that they routinely do, uh, not the two fancy ones, but the ones that we feel that uh, work. <laughs> So always, when you're treating a hand, uh, remember what is underneath. Uh, the main goal is not just to provide uh, a coverage, but to try to have that hand back to range of motion as soon as you can, because stiffness is really going to be your enemy. And uh, also, the importance of the debridement is probably the, the, the key point to have a successful reconstruction. And uh, you have to do a very good work on this step. Also on the hand, you have to be more ambitious that just to, to close the, the, the wound. You really want uh, to regain function and if possible and when possible, you have to take into account the aesthetic and the social function uh, of the hand. So the way I've, uh, I've ordered the lectures, I'm going to start in the fingertips and I'm going to keep on moving all the way up uh, to the elbow. So starting with the fingertips, we're going to see different uh, flap choices. Um, the most seizures is the VY flaps. VY flaps uh, will affect just the same finger. It will allow you to preserve the length of that finger. 
but it will have a limited mobility and it will be just for these kind of defects. They work pretty well if you do uh, a good indication and a good indication is just a transverse amputation of the finger. So you're gonna raise two flaps over the neurovascular bundle on each side and you're gonna rejoin them uh, in the middle. So here you can see uh, a case. You have these kind of amputations. You just move a little bit of these flaps and they work nicely. Another option would be the, the Voller VY flap that was published by Arasol in the in the 70s. It's kind of the same concept, but you're gonna do just one flap and it's gonna be on the Voller side. It works very good if the indication is, is very good. So you shouldn't go uh, more proximal than the DIP uh, crease right here. Uh, these are some pictures by by Shecker who told me how to do this, do this these flaps. And what you're gonna do here is just gonna just incise the skin and then incise the dermal layer. And then when you get to the subcutaneous tissue, you want just to to press your your knife very gently. So you divide the septum, but the vessels that are underneath are not are not cut it. And then you will go from distal to proximal under the skin between the bone and your flap and you're going to just open gently your scissor and th that way you can get a pretty pretty good advancement if you do the wide narrow as uh as uh, it is seen here you will not need to trim the flap here if you take more skin you do a more wide flap then you want to have some unuseful skin here that you're going to need to remove so if you have the next effect, which will be, be a larger defects in the pulp, up to 40% of the pulp, so you need an advancement of your flap of about 1 to 1.5 centimeters, then you can do the anthrograde homogenital neurovascular island uh, flap. It's also a quite easy flap to do. So here you have two designs of the flap. Here you will see this will be the defects on the fingertip. This is the flap. If you, if you go for a shorter flap, it will be better because if you do a longer flap, you have more skin that lost the, the sensation. Remember that this skin here comes from this nerve. So then you have to do uh, a neurovascular dissection area right here. Then you want to leave uh, some uh, fat tissue uh, with the artery and the nerve. You don't want to skeletonize it too much because that's where your reflow, venous reflow is going to come from. So here you can see an example of this flap pretty fast. Quite easy flap. Cross finger flap, uh, even if it's an old flap and even if uh, it's a flap that needs uh, two surgery, we still use it sometimes. It's a quite safe uh, flap. It's very easy and very fast to do. So when those are things that you, you value on a surgery, then you can go for this one. It needs a second surgery. It, there's, there's some called discrepancy, not sensible. If you need to bend the finger uh, to, to put it on, the, on your flap for the fingertip, if he's an older than 31, 40 years old patient, he can end up with some uh, loosening or uh, some uh, stiffness of the PAP joint. So here you can see an example when you have a more oblique amputation of the fingertip and you just elevate this flap. Here is it's very important that you're going to leave the peritendon. So because you're going to need to put a skin graft here and that you put your finger just the same as you do an inguinal flap. You wait for two, three weeks, and then you can go ahead and divide it. For the dorsal skin defects of the of the fingers, um, the main problem if you skin grafted or leave it to wound by second intention is gonna you have a lot of uh, stiffness. So local flaps are pretty useful. So the most easy one will be this one. It will be the dorsal western flap. What you're gonna do the same dissection as the cross finger flap. You're gonna just elevate the skin. You're going to leave here the peritendon and you're going to just advance it and you're going to leave the defect in another area where you can skin graft it. So here you can see an example for a DAP small defect. If you have a hand like this one with several wounds, if your defect is just laying here over the, the, the tendon and you have some peritendon here, just go ahead and skin graft this. As you, as you can see in this finger, the defect was over the PIP joint. So and in this case, it is better to elevate a flap. Here was the original, the flap, you push it uh, distally and then you skin graft here. So at the end of, of, the, of the healing process, you're gonna end up with pliable skin over your joints and then the defects will be moving a non-so so mobile area 
And in that way, you can achieve a good uh, range of motion. When you have a larger defect on the dorsum of the finger on the of the, the uh, proximal phalanx, our favorite flap will be the guava flap. Guava flap, as you can see here in this in these pictures, is really a perforator flap. It's a propeller type, so you're going to rotate this flap 180 degrees to gain some length. Uh, you won't include the metacarpal artery. There's another flap that includes it. It's way more difficult to dissect. Here you will see it's pretty easy to dissect. Here you can see those are the two metacarpal heads, and you can see those branches that come at this level and gonna give uh, uh, provide the vascularity of this skin. So the dissection, you just go ahead and elevate your skin over your tendon. You can go as proximal as the wrist. And it's going to be a plane of dissection here, pretty easy one. And then when you get to the level of the neck of the metacarpals, you will see there's some vessels that come from underneath that don't let you keep on advancing. This is your pedicle. So just keep like around an area of one centimeter and then just rotate your flap 180 degrees. So here you can see on this defect, that will be the pedicle. You can close the donor side by uh, direct closure. So also pretty easy, pretty reliable flap. Uh, the flap that is going to provide you with the more advancement and you're going to be able to move it a little bit all around the finger is the reverse flow island flap um, designed, uh, described, sorry, by Lai. It's a little bit more delicate of a dissection. Uh, it will give you maximal advancement. It will need a skin graft. Uh, as you can see here, you're going to design your flap over the, the collateral artery so here you can see your flap will be here over the collateral artery you're going to go ahead and ligate this artery and then you're going to keep on ligating all these small branches here and then what you're going to leave is this area so you have the flow coming this way and in the arch that is usually at the base and at the next of the dip joint you have uh where the blow goes in reverse sense to your flap and important, very important to leave some fat tissue around this artery because that is where your venous uh, flow is going to come from. Also, going back to the case, you can see here, uh, you can leave or not the nerve. The difference between leaving the nerve or not is if you think that this nerve has some innervation area here that you want to preserve. If everything here is destroyed, you can just go ahead and, and remove it. That'll be a much easier dissection. Very important, as I was saying, just leave around uh, this artery as much fast tissue as you can. So you have a good uh, venous reflow and you don't have a venous congestion problem. So it will reach anywhere the fingertip. You can see here on the dorsum, here will be a, an oblique amputation here. So the local flaps that we talked earlier will not work here. So you can see you can have a very good advancement. If it's a problem of the dorsum also, this was an osteomyelitis, uh, post-traumatic osteomyelitis, uh, you can also uh, get enough advancement to have your flap here. Important to just view why incisions, then you will need to uh, skin graft a little area here. And here you can see the, the final result. Also, if you have a, a defect over the dorsal on the PIP joints, have a reason you cannot do the Western flap. You can do this kind of flap as was done uh, here. And then we're going to move to the volar aspect of the fingers. So here also, depending on the level, but cross finger flap could also solve your problem. You have a, a picture where you can see very clearly where these vessels come from. Usually they'll come from the base of the phalanx or the neck of the phalanx. So here going to a case, it was a, a necrosis secondary to an infection. And you can see here, you don't need to bend the finger at all. So you don't have any stiffness problem. And you have some mismatch, it will not be sensate, but pretty easy, pretty reliable uh, flap to do. Just as a reminder, the guava flap will also be able to cover the base of the fingers. So if you have a defect, uh, sometimes you can just move. If you do this incision here, like a Western flap, you can move those flaps distally. So you leave your defect at the base on the finger and you can cover it with a guava flap. The heterodigital, uh, Island anterograde flow flap is not that a flap that uh, we do a lot because you have to sacrifice the skin from an adjacent finger. 
but if you're concerned or your patient cannot be a micro cases cannot be done or, or it's not a good indication for a micro case then you can do this flap which is also very reliable you will be just dissect the skin over the side of the adjacent finger and here you're going to include just the artery with uh, some fat tissue as i was saying though with the, the flow return will be through that uh fat tissue and you can achieve a pretty good result. Uh, also, it's, it's not a very complicated flap if you don't want to go to a micro. If you have like a more complex of a defect as this patient, you can see here has some tendon injury, arteries are cutted, both of them, both nerves. So you have to, to graft everything and then you need to cover this. Then we will go probably to the foot, on the foot here over the scaphoid. You have uh, here, this is the plantaris medialis artery. And you can see here, this is the posterior uh, tibialis tendon. And here you can see this small vessel. This is your pedicle. And you can just trace it back to to his, 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 uh, to the plantaris medialis artery all the way back to the posterior tip. And here you can see the, the result. It's pretty thin, pretty thin skin. You can see there was a professional biker, so he was able to, to return to use uh, the break. Uh, the donor site uh, takes us some time. It's not an area that is going to uh, close very fast because usually the skin graft don't take so good. But uh, at the end, it, it closes, so it's a good indication. The neurocutaneous uh, flap is a flap that you're going to remove from the second toe. So it's basically like you will do on, the, on a finger, uh, island flap and homo digital or hetero digital island flap but you're going to do, do this in a in a free matter you have uh to me his main indication is when you need distally you need this artery to plug it to something so you you, you need to do like a vein graph instead of doing a vein graph you do a, a free flap and then here you revascularize the distal aspect also if you're going to need the uh, uh, nerve wraps here you're going to have the dorsal and the plantar nerve of that second toe that you can use to to uh, reconstruct the nerves of your fingers so you have like everything you need on a single flap you have the the artery reconstructive nerve reconstructive and the and the skin coverage so a good case would be something like this it can be traumatic or in this case it was it was after a burn but when you when you straight up strain it up this finger you're gonna have a, a big loss of, of skin but it's not only the skin it's like this artery when you extend the finger won't work in the world it's gonna either get uh, thrombosed or it's gonna get so much elongated that it might be even break so here you use this flap and uh, you plug this three the artery to reconstruct it so here you can see on the other fingers just there's more easy um z plastics and some skin grafts and in the end you can achieve a, a pretty good uh, function of the of the patient's hand another case similar case very small defect you you can just go ahead and, and do a, a another finger flap or a local flap but you can do also a pretty easy pretty fast uh free flaps to do and then you will get motion the radial artery superficial uh palmar branch flap is a flap that, that uh, dr young told me how to do it it's a modification of dr scame free thinner flap it has uh, several advantages um the main to me is that it's on the same area. So when you get to an emergency case and at the end you need, that, you need a free flap, you can just do it or you don't want to go to the foot for any reason or the patient don't want you to go to the foot. It is right here. It's very, very reliable uh, supply. So here you're going to have your radial artery. Here you're going to have the superficial radial artery. This will be your pedicle. Sometimes this one can be missing, but you will have a more proximal one. It's called a nominate artery. We will come here too. Uh, the venous drainage will be just the subcutaneous vein that crosses a rod of the, the, the flap. And the innervation can be provided by this one. This is the, the thinner branch of the median nerve. So here you can see a, a, a cadaver presentation where you can see here the radial artery, superficial radial artery, and did at the level of the scapho. This is a scapho tubercle. You will see these branches that uh, are going to uh, provide the vascularity and then the artery is gonna most of the cases sometimes it doesn't but often the case is gonna plunge back into the thinner muscle so here you're gonna like get it and this will be your pedicle so here you can see some cases in the fingers i can do this small free flap sorry for the pictures quite bad uh, another case for a 
Claro, finger. It is quite important to respect the maximal width of the flap. If you are under 2.5 centimeters, you won't have any any loose any loss of uh, abduction of the of the thumb. If you take it a little bit wider, then you might end up with some abduction. So you can also use it for the dorsal of the finger. Here, a quava flap is probably not gonna um, be enough to come all the way here, especially if you want to also take out the skin that doesn't look so good. That was done in this case. Uh, we tried to do everything on the same uh, surgical act. So we did uh, the, the palmaris longus graft to reconstruct the extensor mechanism and then cover everything with this with small flap. Uh, you can see here, how the, we just did a, a cut to reconstruct the aponychium. And here you can see the donor side. Uh, it's pretty acceptable because this, this won't be too much noticeable. On the veins is the the, the incision is going to be more noticeable. And here you can see uh, the epinocum gut and fairly thin skin. I think you can achieve a pretty good result with it. Uh, for the thumb, you have the classics, will be Mober Brian flaps. Uh, it's basically very similar dissection. The Mober just, just going to elevate all the volar skin. And then what you're going to do is bend this uh, IP joint in order to achieve uh, some length uh, of the flap tone coverage. If you go for the O'Brien, what you're going to do is convert this into an island flap. So you're going to just leave this flap hanging by the artery, the nerves, and uh, some fat tissue around to have some uh, venous outflow. And uh, you can see here, there was a case of, uh, of, uh, of a kid that has his finger trapped and uh, we choose to do this flap and it, it works pretty nice. You can see you can you can get up to the torso and uh, uh, you're going to need to do uh, a skin wrap here. But it's a, it's a very reliable flap too. Kite flap is a flap that uh, I don't like that much. I had some uh, bad experience sometimes uh, with stiffness. If you take the skin of the MP joints, it will depend if you can follow here the, the, the vascular vessels. If you don't, you're going to want to take this area too, and then you can have some stiffness. But it's also, if you have a large effects of the thumb, you don't want to get into a micro case. This is also a case from Louisville. You can just go ahead and take this skin, as you can see here. It will reach nicely, and you can achieve a, 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 a good result too. The Brunelli flap, this one we use it uh, way more. Uh, as you know, on the dorsal aspect of the thumb, in the dorsal and ulnar aspect of the thumb, you have this, this dorsal artery. This artery will have mainly two communicating branches with the volar system. One of the communicating branches will be here in the neck of the phalange, and the other one will be here underneath on the, of the ongle bed. So here you can see the artery and uh, the dissection, what you're going to do is make a line over the, the midpoint of the dorsum. Then you take another line here in the in the, uh, in the lie line, which is the, the line that divides the dorsal skin with the volar skin. And then your incision will be placed in the middle. And what you're going to do is just elevate it. it has two doors on the both sides. Here you're going to elevate the skin just as a, a skin graft. You really want it to be very thin because you want a lot of tissue here because you won't see the artery. You will just see some tissue, but you probably won't be able to see the artery in most of the cases. And then that will be your flap. So then you continue to dissection and this will be your pedicle. So always in this trap, uh, uh, I try to go for a very wide uh, pedicle to make sure that I have some, some good uh, vascularity coming from it. Then you can just go ahead and cut it on, vola, on both sides to go underneath uh from a uh, radial to door to ulnar and then you complete your dissection and then you just go ahead and, and rotate it so here you can see how the flap looks this is a case that i just did uh, last week that i just thought it would be useful to include you can see it was an open fracture and here i have some bone exposed so i just go ahead and did uh, this small flap with uh with this this was the area of the flap and here you can see some skin graft So the, the finger pop is is a, is a different animal. I mean, the, the 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 skin over the tips of the fingers are really not a match for any local flap. I mean, there's some that you can do has not been seen, but uh, it will not be the same. Here you need like three three qualities of the skin. You need uh, to be very cushioned. 
you need to be with a very good sensation and also you need to be stable so it doesn't move too much so local flaps usually cannot provide this so if you want to go for the best result available for some patients uh, usually we do this for the index and and, and thumb but as you can see here you have uh, all the volar respect of the finger is gone uh, so we will go to the to the alux of the of the first toe and we'll take our flap from here. As you can see, if you need, you can if it's needed, you can extend it proximally to cover the proximal phalanx or the middle phalanx. And you may include like artery, vein, and uh, one nerve. So you can see here, you can, can restore pretty good the shape of the finger. And the sensation is also quite good because you do an end-to-end -end, uh, neurography to the to the nerve of the foot. And the donor area, I think, is it's it's pretty acceptable. Uh, instead of, of messing up with one of the fingers, as we will do in a liter, here you was just have your defect on the on the on the toe. Here we did this. You can do it very small. This patient was just a physiotherapist that uh, really need to work with her hands, so you can do it as small as you need to, with a minor donor zone, and also a good cushion. Here will be in a second finger, uh, so. I don't think you can do this with any local flaps. And, and especially in these cases, you know, when you see these, these, these cases here, well, it's not only like the skin defect, but it's really like the, the finger is empty. I mean, you can try to put some, some uh, kite flap here, but it's going to be very thin. It's going to move a lot. And with a, with a, with a pulp transfer, you, you can really restore uh, the function of that fingertip in a way that I think no other flap can do, as you can see here. Moving on to the palmar aspect of the of the hand, um, I would say it's special about the palm if you really want to have a stable skin. You don't want to have like an ELT that is moving a lot. Then when they try to grab something, it's gonna feel very uncomfortable. So in this area, we try to go for flash that provide more uh, stable um, uh, coverage. So. Is this a case like this one, where it's just in this aspect of the of the volar part? Then you can do a fast cutaneous flap as an ELT. That will work uh, nicely, as you can see here. But if you have a, a larger area like this one, it was like a complete um, circumferential uh, injury of the palm of the hand. So here, uh, this skin, you want a gliding uh, tissue. But on this one, you don't want that. So what we usually do is, is on the palm, go for a fascial uh, flap with some skin graft. In this case, had the defect was circumferential, we did an ALT, half of the flap with, uh, with skin for the dorsum, and the other part was for the volar spec. Sorry. And here what we did, uh, we did two pedicles, and we did uh, an arterial anastomosis because it was quite a long flap, just to make sure we have a good vascularity. Here you can see the the pictures of the post tap, and this is the final result. When on the dorsum you have a pretty decent uh, skin coverage, but on the on the other side, on the polar part, you have a uh, um, let me just click this out. Here you have a uh, uh, way more stable skin coverage. And see, there you go. Uh, of course, the medial plantar free flap is also a good indication. We don't do it uh, that much, but uh, is 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 the more like like uh, skin that you can find. So it's glabrous skin, and uh, sensation is very good. But uh, it tends to swell a little bit, but it's exactly the same tissue, so it, it is a good indication to do this flap too. Just to keep in mind, when you have a, a skin defect, try to have in mind uh, when you're gonna do afterwards so in this case you could just go ahead and do a local flap but but if the end goal is to provide a hand with a reconstruction then you have to, to think um, about that on the first surgery so in, in this case what we did is an ALT flap we just folded can in the in the middle uh, so we could regain we could we could create a, a palmer uh, palm, sorry, of the hand. And what we did is put in the middle of the flap some uh, bone cement, as you can see here. And then on a second, on the second surgery, we did a, a toe to hand transfer. So just to to keep in mind that to reconstruct, not to just the defect, but try to think about what you're gonna be doing later to reconstruct your your hand.
For the dorsum of the hand, uh, then you need a thin pliable skin with elasticity and, and you don't want to be too bulky. So usually the posterior interior archery flap is a local pedicle reverse flow flap. It's pretty useful. Uh, as you can see here, you have the, the dorsal and the volar interosseous arteries. In between the septi of the fifth and sixth compartment, you're going to find these arteries. Pretty small here, but it's pretty large when you get more proximally. And, uh, and the, the main thing, the main advantage is you do, do not sacrifice any major, any major arterial axis. Um, the drawbacks, uh, you're going to leave some uh, large uh, scars over the forearm and it's not possible to be done in risk injuries. So you're going to draw a line between the lateral epicondyle and the DRJ and uh, your flap, usually your perforators are around this area. I would say from, from the half, little bit more proximal than half than this, uh, backwards more proximal is where you have the perforators. So just remember to leave three centimeters. Sometimes you can leave less, but the, the safe uh, the safe way to do it is leave around three centimeters. You're gonna be able to see those communicating branches. And uh, just think of what will be the, your point of rotation to make sure it's proximal and then just rotate your flap. So a defect like this one, when you have uh, this, this, this size of a defect with no injuries of the wrist, um, pursuing Terosio's flap, I think is, is, is the flap to go. And here you can see the, the final result. As free flaps, um, just to make a, a little when you need the larger free flaps, as it's gonna be the, the dorsal of the hand or when you get a little bit more proximal, uh, you can choose between fascio cutaneous flaps or muscle flaps. Uh, to me, really the only advantage that you're gonna get from a muscle free flap is the better three-dimensional adaptation. This is, if I need this, I will go for a muscle flap. If not, usually we go fascio cutaneous flap is gonna be, have a better aesthetic result. Uh, and it's especially in the hand, it's very, very common that you're going to need to do a reintervention to do some some um, dentalysis or some grafting, and it's way easier with a fascicutaneous flap. So lateral more flap is a pretty useful flap. It's on the same um, limb. Uh, the dissection is not very complicated because it's, it's, it's an axial flap. Um, Usually, if it's not too large, you can you can achieve uh, a direct uh, closure with a constant anatomy. The drawbacks will be the small caliber of the artery and the short pedicle. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit too bulky, depending on the patient. And this one, you don't have the, the, the possibility of thinning it too much during the surgery. So here you can see the intermuscular inter septum location. And in a case like this one, it was a crushing injury that with a thermal burn after the dissection. What we did here is elevate, here you can see a little bit of the pedicle. This is a, a posterior interosseal fascial flap that we just put underneath the tendon just to provide some gliding, uh, gliding plane in between the tendons and the bone. And then we covered everything with, uh, with this uh, lateral arm flap, as you can see here. And donor side is quite acceptable. Another case similar, you know, after with a with also with a small fracture. So here we did everything at once just to do the suture of the tendons and fixation of the fracture. And the, here you, you can close this directly. The problem is if you close this directly, he will not ever be able to make a fist. So just make sure that you measure your defects and being able to perform a full fist. And in this case, this was the defect that we had. And for this this size of defect, I think that the 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 lateral morph flap is 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 an easy flap and, and is a good indication especially if you have you don't need a long pedicle have here all the radial uh artery vessels and uh, under six centimeter has in this case you can just go ahead and do a direct closure of the donor side the alt flap is probably our workhorse is the flap that we do the most uh over the years uh, I like it a lot. Uh, it can match you have do very large defect. We have, have a very long pedicle with very low morbidity. Sometimes it can be bulky, but you will see you can you can do a, a pretty good job on uh, on trimming it down. Uh, 
some cases you can have an anatomic variation and you have to end up doing a, a freestyle free flap where you just follow a perforator, perforator, just whatever it takes you. But most of the cases you're gonna find a, a very good branch that raises from the from the descended branch on the circumflex femoral artery. So this is a case like this one. In these kind of cases, try to do everything at once. So this was the patient. And this was the, the osteosynthesis that the patient had at the time it was uh, referred to us. So this, this osteosynthesis is not going to allow you to do any kind of early rehab. So try to avoid it. Uh, and what we do is go ahead, just deep right everything until you have healthy tissue. Um, graft the bone if you need to, then change this osteosynthesis for something strong that is going to allow you to start range of motion in days and then cover it with a, with a free flap. And the ELT flap is the perfect indication for these fish defects. In this case, we, we had to do some tendon repair. We use the, the fascia, uh, the fascia, tend, um, fascia lata graft to, re, to reconstruct those, those, those extensor tendons. And you can see you can achieve also a uh, quite good result. So, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, so when you have like a, in these cases, let me go just backwards, make sure. There you go. If you got like larger all multi-digital defects, uh, here what you're gonna do is a flap for all the fingers. So. Here was a flexure contracture. Uh, this was a lateral more flap. So you do just one flap. Then try to, if, if if you have to wait some time between surgery, just refer the patient to therapy. So make sure he got a good range of motion. And then you go ahead and divide your flap and then you have your four fingers uh, back. We have like more complicated defects like this patient here where he has merely more than one finger involved the dorsal of the heart. Then the ALT can be very useful because you can really think of a design uh, with skin and some fascia overlay to try to trim through all the defects, all the corners. Uh, in these cases, you have to do it very thin until you just I mean how to do it very thin. And uh, and yeah, you can you can kind of, of do like an origami design so you can close everything and then you have some fascia if you need to. And at the end, uh, we have this defect on the second finger, so with the uh, uh, pop transfer, and here you can see the the end result. If you have a larger defect, uh, just remember the problem with the skin graft. So the patient has a burn; it was treated with skin graft, and and his hand was pretty much useless. He he has a very very big contracture; he can hardly move the first and second fingers. So in these cases, the problem with the uh, free flaps with the ALT, if it might be too thick. And if you put something like this on your hand, it's not going to be an aesthetic problem. It's going to be a, a function problem. So there have been several ways where that you can uh, really trim down the, 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 the width of the, of the ALT. This is the one that we do. So we leave uh, here. Uh, what well, the perforator uh, passes the fascia here we're going to leave uh, some tissue probably more than this probably will be like two by two centimeter uh, patch that's going to be wide enough to have all our vessels but on, on the other on the rest of the flap we will go at this level this is the fascia de scarpa fascia de scarpa is, is a fascia that will divide this you know this big uh, big fat uh, bubbles with the much smaller uh, fat tissue that is just underneath the dermal plane. So you can see here, this, these are all dissected on the fascia layer, much more thin. If you really want to go all the way down, then you can take all the fat tissue down, but you have to leave this. This is the subdermal uh, layer, the subdermal plexus. This is the thinner you can go. And uh, so in a defect like this, it, it don't have to be all like super thin. You just need super thin on some places. So this is what we did here. And uh, as you're gonna see now, you can really have a very, very thin skin. So so you, this was not revised. This is just by the first surgery. You can see you can hardly notice which one was of original skin. And, and in a hand, this is function. I mean, it's not general aesthetic. I mean, you just change the skin to a thin skin and then this hand is working again without any other surgery done. 
And then to end, I'm going to move a little bit uh, upwards just to cover the, the elbow area and the large defects of the forearm. I'm going to start with the posterior part of the elbow. Uh, one easy flap is to do the posterior anterior flap, but instead of doing this, uh, how we, we did it before, where we took the skin here and the pedicle area with this one, the rotation area with this one, you will do it in an anterograde flow pedicle. So you take your flap over this part, over the fifth, sixth compartment, and you're going to just move it up pedicle on the proximal part of the forearm to reach your elbow. So to have a small defect, pretty easy flap to do. If you need a little bit more skin, uh, then you can go for a reverse lateral armor flap. Uh, for example, this case was an, an exposure of the of the uh, osteosynthesis material. So the problem with this flap is, is to, you're not going to be able to make it too thin. It's going to be quite bulky if the patient has some fat tissue, but it's also pretty safe to, to dissect. You can see here, you can achieve a reasonable result. Um, you can do it like pretty large. It was a case we did a, a free fib uh, to reconstruct uh, an ulna, as you see here. And we have some, we had some complications in the post-op. At the end of the surgery, at the end of the post-op period, we had like our hard work here was our free flip and all this area of necrosis. So even in these quite large uh, defects, you can go ahead and cover them with a reverse lateral armor flap. It's, it's pretty useful flap to, to know for the posterior elbow region, that is the, the, the free flip heel. Of course, free flaps, ALT flaps will work lovely here, but um, we try to avoid them as much as we can, but you will have a, a good result. On the follow respect, just remember these have to move. So if you don't want to do any complicated flap, just go ahead and take a radial anterograde uh, pedicle flap and just put it on your defect. If you what you have to avoid is doing like skin grafts over this area because end gonna end up on a contractor like this patient that we had to release. Here you can see all the contractor that happened, and then we have to cover with an ERT flap. So if you if you get a patient that has something like this, where you can see oh, this is pretty good granulation, let's go just a, a, a skin graft here is going to end up with that with a flexion contractor so i think the way to go in these cases is just debride everything to healthy muscle tissue remove all the scar tissue and do, uh, do a coverage with an alt flap and just to end in the large defect of uh, the forearm like this patient have uh, this by and this uh, fracture of the radius and the ulna. Well, we usually would do the plating of the same uh, surgery as the free flap. This will be our three flaps that we can use. I will say most of the cases, ELT flaps. Some cases, we use this is the toracodacial uh, flap, which is mainly the fascia that is covering this, the latissimus dorsi flap. And latissimus dorsi flap, as I was saying, it was saying uh, just for three dimensional, very complex effects. So ALT flap will do nicely. You can do pretty long and you cover all the forearm. But if you have a case like this one, this is a patient with a very bad uh, crushing injury of his, his uh, arm and forearm. So here, this patient had done uh, a vein graft by the vascular department of another hospital, and it was referred like this to us. So this is a very bad situation. You don't, have, you don't want to have this on your ward. Because with this tissue right here over your vein graft, it might either uh, start bleeding massively or it can get a thrombosis. So in many cases, what you want to do with those patients is take them to the OR, then do serial debridements. And in the areas where your vein graft uh, is exposed, you just put a skin graft and every one to two days, you go elevate the skin graft and you put it back again. So you make sure it doesn't stick too much. So by the time you do the, the final coverage of this defect, uh, you can just remove them and do a nice coverage. So here, as you can see, this is a, a, an, a, an area that really, if I put an ALT flap, first of all, is quite large, but if I want to do it, I will have some, some problems of adaptation. I'm going to have a lot of third spaces, then it's going to fill up with fluid and it's going to get infected. So I think this is a good indication to do a muscle flap. 
So here in this case, has uh, we have already the vascular surgeons have already done this long vein graft. What we do, we take the contralateral saphenous uh, vein and you do a loop, as you can see here. This is plaque way proximal on the on the artery, on the brachial artery, and then we plug it back on one of the veins, and it will be the pedicle for for our final flap which in this case, uh, we really need a large flap. So the larger flap that we use is this one. It's a combined uh, serratus and latissimus dorsi flap. So you, you can see here both flaps, you, you get pretty large, pretty large amount of tissue and it really fits very well. So here, all those tridimensional septi get covered. You have third spaces. It's much unlikely that it might get infected. Uh, here you can see uh, if it does, you cannot close your pedicle. You just put a, a skin graft and you leave it there forever. We have to take back the patient to elevate the flap and advance it a little bit because the problem with the uh, latissimus dorsi flap is that the more distal part is usually innervated by the, the, the sacral plexus. So, so it's not so well innervated by the thoracodorsal artery. So you might end up with this, with a necrosis of the distal part of the flap. And this was the the final result where you can you can see in the the more proximal part here this is the the, the skin graft over the pedicle not much problem with that so this is, will be to me a good indication for our muscle flap so as a conclusion you see in the hand there's many many things that you can do different flaps different techniques easy more complicated so choose your flap depending First, on what is the end goal that you want to do? What is that what the patient needs or what you're in that situation that you're living? What is the best option for that patient? Uh, especially know all the all the different flaps by anatomical area and have a larger momentarium. If you, if you have like several things you can do, you will be much more in need to, to solve these problems. Um, thank you very much. Beautiful. Really an outstanding lecture about coverage of the upper limb. Beautiful, Ignacio. Uh, you. you start from very, very simple things and you arrive to do extraordinary, uh, not only uh, reconstruction, but th thought. Um, and you give us uh, surgical tip and trips for every flap. So really, thank you very much was My very pleasure. useful for me, for me. <laughs> that, <laughs> and another thing I have to say to Andrew and all the uh, colleagues, uh, uh, this is an orthopedic surgeon doing plastic surgery much better than a plastic <laughs> surgeon. And just to say that, that so you can do that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, thanks for really amazing talk. Uh, many interesting labs, many interesting uh, methods of cover of how to cover these defects and others in really very outstanding uh, cases. Thank you very much. Uh, from my own experience, I tried Quabo flap for maybe three times and all three times it, it's end up with failure. I don't know why. Maybe you can uh, say some tips and tricks about Quabo flap. So the, the problem was venous congestion or it was an yes. arterial inflow? Venous congestion. So if the problem is venous congestion, the problem with the flap is sometimes you leave too wide of a pedicle. So you have a lot of tissue here. So when you twist it, when you twist it 180 degrees, uh, the veins might get pinched. So, so my advice will be to try to use less of a pedicle. If you if you're able to raise it without a tourniquet, so you can you can see the artery and just leave one or two veins, and do open here and leave some tissue here in this area. Leave the tissue here. It will it will be able to turn, but you will have some outflow coming also for this part if you don't pedicle here. I see. Thank you very much. Do not skeletonize the artery. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> yeah, of course. Do you, do you know, Ignacio, do you know the um, Bakash flap? So the flap that uh, is, um, you can go more distal than the Quaba one and use the adipofascial, uh, um, the adipofascial tissue 
from another ah. finger. It's so, uh, is Bakash described that, that was a Lebanese surgeon, very nice. Yes, I haven't included this for the for the dose. Oh, no, the no, 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 no. I don't want to say no. no but it was beautiful. I don't want to say no. So uh, we have a few questions from attendees. And first question was, uh, what is your opinion about uh, arterialized uh, flow through venous flap free flaps in hand and finger defect reconstruction? So uh, the main indication I have for those free flaps is on on the on the replant of a ring finger. When you do a replant of a ring finger, you always gonna need a, a vein graft to reconstruct the artery. And usually, this part here where the where the ring avolves the skin, the skin always die. So what I use is uh, take the 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 vein here over the volar part of the forearm. And uh, I, I use one vein has an inflow and then to another vein that I have to do all the way back to the dorsum. And I think they work very nicely there. They were gonna look ugly for the first two days, but your finger is gonna be well, and at the end they'll heal very well. So that will be my indication. Flow through, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh... The next question about uh, so-called Italian fla flap, um, that's about radial flap, I seen or- uh, The radial flap? Radial flap or abdominal flap, Italian. Like, like, you mean uh, like, uh, like the Chinese flap? Chin Chinese flap, it's radial flap. And Italian flap, I seen that's abdominal flap. Italian. Well, I, I don't use it that much to be to be honest. Usually we'll go for a for a free flap. But it's true that the, the place where I do those free flaps is our labor compensated hospital. So I have pretty young, healthy patients most of the time. So I usually will try to do a free flap or something for the same limb. But sure, if you if you don't know how to do microsurgery, it's a good option. Mm, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's a good option in uh, case of gunshot injuries when you don't know exactly is everything okay with uh, vessels uh, and for maybe it can be some damage of intima of uh, the artery or other thing, especially in uh, some cases of shrapnel wounds where there is a lot of injury for uh, big uh, defects. Uh, so um, I think in, in these cases, it's mostly reliable flap, domino flap. Yes. So um, may I ask you uh, easy things, sorry. Dermal substitute, what do you think? Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with them. The only time I've used them is uh, when we take like a large flap on the dorsum of the foot and you don't want to skin graft that directly that. We've used that that yeah. just to put it before the screen graft. Uh, it worked pretty good. And I've used it too in uh, failures of a uh, flap. But as I primarily think, uh, we don't use it, to be honest. It's quite expensive. I've, every time I try to prescribe it, I have to justify it a lot why I'm uh, using it. Yes, thank you very much. For donor area of, it's nice. Yeah, yes. you're right. Yeah. Uh, okay, may, please. No, no, it's uh, the same. Uh, may I ask you if you use a, uh, Pericle, latissimus dorsi for the elbow. Uh, sometimes uh, could be useful, uh, it's not difficult, big loss of substance, it's difficult to reach the, the more distal part with a safe uh, flap, but uh, I think that for the elbow, this could be an easy solution. What do you think? 
Uh, I agree. I mean, if you if you don't want to get to anything more complicated, it it, it will reach and uh, is an easy defect. Also, from this part of the scapula, so you have a defect in this area, you can pedicle up to here, and it works. It works nicely. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, um, I have a question about the flap and infection uh, in the wound. Um, do you have uh, any experience in this? Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I, I do. So the, the main thing, as I was saying, is that the debridement is very, very important. That will be the first thing. Another thing is you have to avoid third spaces. If you if it's really impossible because you have like a like a wound, a gunshot a wound or whatever, uh, just fill that defect with bone cement. Make sure there's nothing, there's not a space here where things can get uh, the the flow can stay there because you're gonna get infected. And then what I was saying, you feel like a, like your skin flap is gonna not have a good inlay is going to have some some areas where it's going to be a space then is it is better to do a muscle flap muscle flaps that will be to me the good indication is when you have those problems where you have like like the bone or you don't you have you don't have interosseal muscles you have all the bones sticking up to on the side then do a muscle flap and um the problems I had is the typical problems you have a patient he has just had his surgery so it was plated like two, three, four weeks ago, and then the plate goes exposed. So with those patients, is you remove everything, to him, the problem becomes much bigger. You have to put an external fix and do a free flap. So we try to, to give a chance of those, those materials just to clean everything, clean the wound and just cover it. Most of the time, uh, it doesn't get infected, but those are the cases where sometimes I get an infection and then I have to go and elevate the flap again and take out that plate and clean everything and then put the, the, the flap uh, again. That will be like my, my three advices. I just want to, to make a comment. Uh, I saw cases so nice, uh, the, the, the cases where you put gliding tissue between tendon and bone, and the flap on so the the tendon are in between two live tissue this is so important and another message is cover the joint with good tissue and if you if you need to put some skin graft not in the joint so really really thanks i saw beautiful thing and the flap that uh, is grafted in the in the because always we have problem with the Palmer side of yes. the head. It's always everything is horrible there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the only good things is second intention healing, and uh, was very nice idea to remove the skin, put a skin graft there, and the dorsum with the uh, beautiful, really nice. If you want, to show you the cases, but I think that at, at the moment we have everything we need, so I, we don't need Andrew as you want. Uh, I think in peer legion you can uh, you can show your cases. It's there's interesting cases of how one problem can be solved by different. Yeah, I, I there are very very easy cases compared to Ignacio one, but just to show you uh, how in different cases in different uh, um, situation in our life when we are. Uh, much more expert or not, you can solve a problem in different way. So this is an abrasion, uh, car accident. This uh, is 24 years old. He lost uh, all the tendon of the second, third, and fourth finger on the extensors in zone six and seven. So this is the debridement. The debridement is always the key of our uh, reconstruction. If you do not remove everything like a tumor, you cannot uh, achieve your uh, good results for the functional point of view. And uh, this is the same thought that Ignacio uh, gave us. So don't leave extensor tendon on the bone. Uh, first option, you can do a 
uh, a reconstruction with some, um, uh, you can put some rods for the tendon and do a secondary reconstruction. Or if you do a, a reconstruction in one time, I think it's very important to separate the tendon from the bone. So in this case, we use the, uh, an ATL. We cannot really thin the ATL because we use the fascia down under the tendon and the fat on the tendon. So we tried, as you did with two flaps, with one flaps to do the reconstruction. So uh, graft for the tendon and uh, the fascia under the graft. And uh, this is a little bit bulky, as you told us, but you can do secondary procedure. Uh, this was some years ago. Uh, maybe now I will do something a little bit thinner because I'm a little bit better with my surgery. But this is, was uh, 10 years before. A dorsal crash of the hand. I don't know what to do. Not very good to do ATL flap at that moment. Uh, much better to do muscle flap, but this was difficult to cover with a muscle flap. So I did a radial flap and uh, it's, I was so happy in that period of my life to do that surgery. And uh, this is the final result. And uh, obviously uh, you have to try to not use the same arm to solve a problem because you, you damage two times. But if you do not do, know how to do uh, a radial flap, a local flap, I think it's really a good option. You cannot say, no, what are you doing uh, about that? So different time in your life, different uh, uh, experience of surgeons, and uh, we need to know everything, but we have to do what we, we know. Absolutely. And sometimes it's not like you don't have to do it, like you cannot do it. There's some patient that the anesthesia guy will just come and say, there's no way you're going to put this guy under uh, four or five hours of general anesthesia. You have to do something local. So you really have to know the basics. It's, it's very important too. And uh, yes, also, I, I, I think the, 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 the pedicle, the perforator island of the of radial artery also can be uh, quite useful. So yes, I think there's still a place to all these flaps and you th I think you have to know how to do them for sure. Yeah. So if you do not have other questions, if you want, Andre, we can close. Uh, if you want to close in Ukrainian or... or uh... Uh, okay, I, we don't have any more questions from attendees, not in the Q&A, not in the chat, so... I think we can close. Uh, what <laughs> what can I say? Thank you again, one more time, Ignatia, uh, for this uh, beautiful talk. Uh, thank you, Pierluigi, for sh sharing this uh, session. And thanks to all our attendees for attending and to be with us this evening. Uh, hope to see all of you next webinar. Yes, we have to say that the next one is about tendons. So yeah. uh, Jonathan and I, we try to, 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 to give some suggestion for uh, immediate repair and uh, uh, late problems about tendons in one month. Yeah. So thank you one more time. My pleasure. Ciao, 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 thank you. Ciao. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye, bye Andrew. Bye bye. We are thinking on you. Thanks. Bye.